Good evening, my name is Josh Devine. I'm proud to serve as the Communications Director for the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. Thank you for joining us as we discuss this ongoing and fluid situation. We have two speakers. First, Commissioner Parker from the Tennessee Department of Correction and then TBI Director David Rausch. Both gentlemen will make some remarks and then we'll open it up for questions. First, Commissioner Parker. Thank you, Josh. This evening, uh, this morning at approximately 11.30 a.m., Correctional Administrator Deborah Johnson was found in her residence, deceased at the West Tennessee State Penitentiary. There was indication in her residence that foul play was involved. Immediately following, the facility was locked down and the official inmate count was conducted. At that time, inmate Curtis Ray Watson, 36-47-44, was found missing from a work detail. Appropriate protocols was initiated. The TBI was contacted along with local law enforcement and a manhunt was initiated immediately. <clears throat> Deborah Johnson began her career with the Department of Corrections on January 30th, 1981 as a correctional officer. She led a distinguished career over 38 years of service to the people of this great state. Ms. Johnson served in numerous positions in the Department of Corrections across the state, including Correctional Sergeant, Deputy Warden, Warden, and most recently as the Correctional Administrator for the West Region. The inmate was a minimum custody offender assigned to a job of farm laborer at the Henning facility. Curtis Watson was serving a 15-year sentence on an especially aggravated kidnapping conviction out of Henry County 2013. His current sentence was due to expire in 2025. Watson had previously been convicted of aggravated child abuse out of Carroll County. That sentence expired in 2011. He had no disciplinary since 2007. Prior to 2007, he had disciplinary for failure to report to his assigned duties and classes. I want to extend my condolences to the family of Ms. Johnson, who was the victim of this homicide. Tonight, the TDOC is working closely with the TBI, the Department of Safety, and local law enforcement agencies to search and to find Curtis Ray Watson, who is listed as the person of interest in this homicide. Rest assured that we will find this offender and bring justice to the family of Deborah Johnson. I, I want to reiterate uh, the condolences to the family. Um, obviously, this is a, a tough loss uh, for the family and, and uh, uh, quite frankly, for the state of Tennessee. Uh, we also recognize uh, that it's a loss to uh, the Tennessee Department of Corrections and uh, our thoughts, our prayers uh, go out to the family, but also to the uh, to TDOC and, and, their, and their team. TBI is currently working with various agencies across the area to do everything possible to find this person of interest, uh, Mr. Curtis Watson. We will continue to work throughout the night in the ongoing search. We're asking the public to be on the lookout and pay attention to the pictures that have been uh, sent out of Mr. Watson. Uh, remember them. If you spot Curtis Watson, do not approach him. Call 911. He is to be considered dangerous. Residents in the area should be vigilant and report anything suspicious to law enforcement. TBI has issued a blue alert and we have added Watson to our most wanted list. Our agents and forensic scientists are actively investigating the homicide and will be working that scene throughout this night. Last, let me reiterate, this is a serious situation and uh, we ask the public to stay vigilant, stay aware. We need to get this dangerous individual into custody. And that, that's all I have at this time. Are there, are there any questions? It is still early in the investigation. 
you said she was found in her home dead. So how would an inmate have the ability to find out uh, what address this, you know, this person would, would be at? The facility in West Tennessee has about 12, 8 to 12 properties on site that staff live in. Uh, Ms. Johnson lived in one of those properties that are located on, that is located on the site of the facility. Can you talk a little bit about her role and how she works with any of the inmates? Have they had contact before? We don't know of any specific contact that Ms. Johnson may have had. Now, Deborah's been in the, in the system a long time. Uh, as many years of service as she has uh, with the offenders in Tennessee, it's possible she could have known this, uh, this offender. Uh, but her role basically is to supervise the facilities in the West region, the, the wardens in that area. And uh, Deborah is known as a very dedicated uh, professional correctional employee, respected both by the offender population and the people who work for our department. Any stolen property, a gun, car from her residence? I would refer that to the director. It, again, way early in the investigation for us to release anything uh, of that nature. Do we think he's armed? Uh, again, I, I, I can't go into those details at this time. Could you say on foot or in a car by any chance? Uh, we, we know that, uh, that he had uh, left the area on a tractor. The tractor has been located. Can you say how far away the tractor is? About a mile, mile and a half. Two more questions. This, er, this early on, just how, how does it appear that she was killed? I, again, those details I cannot release at this point. Last question. Any um, possible destination? Uh, that's all part of our investigation. We're still trying to determine that. Some more questions? Yeah. Who, does, who did um, Ms. Johnson answer to? Like, who is her direct superior? Ms. Johnson would answer to the Assistant Commissioner of Prisons for the Department of Corrections. Has the governor become involved in this case at all? Yeah, the, the governor has been briefed uh, since, since we have learned of the situation, and he's, we, we've been in close contact uh, with the governor and his staff. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you again for your interest. We really could not do it without your help in getting these pictures out there for the public. Again, the message tonight, we need the public to remain vigilant. We need the public to remember these images, remember these pictures, and by all means, if you spot this individual, do not approach him. Call 911 immediately.